I'm here today with the game Embarcadero, which is designed by Adam Buckingham and Ed Marriott, with artwork by Jonas Orban and published by Renegade Games. Welcome to 1850s San Francisco as you try to become a titan of the growing city on the coast. Yerba Buena, now known as San Francisco, grew from about 400 residents to over 25,000 in a single year. It is post gold rush and abandoned ships line the harbor and you as a business person seek to grow your influence in the city. You have a plan to use these ships to build the city in new and exciting ways. Embarcadero is a tile lane, air control, and hand management game where you use resources to build your buildings and increase your influence with the city council. Let's take a look at how to play the game. Set the game board to the side showing the correct number of players, which is shown down here in the right-hand corner. With the unsinkable expansion, the game plays up to five players, but as it is, it will play four players. You'll place the ship tiles, wharf tiles, and infill tiles, resource tokens, and 100 point tokens and coins in a general supply near the board. Each player will also choose a color and take their tiles and building structures. Also take a player board and at random or choosing, take a character card. You'll need to decide if you're using the advanced or regular side of this card. For this game, I've set it up with the basic side, where there's a resource shown for each character. On the advanced side, there's also an ongoing benefit, a one-time benefit, and an end-of-game scoring benefit. You'll set that next to your player board here. Each player should also take $15 from the supply to start the game, set one of their tracking tokens at the zero space on the score track and at the zero space on the council track. Shuffle the ship cards, dealing four to each player, then set four below the ship deck. Do the same with the building cards. After each player has eight cards in hand, they're going to take some of those and keep them. For any cards they keep, they're going to have to pay the cost. I've kept five cards, and if I were to keep all five of these, I'd have to pay five, seven, nine, and I would be left with six money. After I've paid that back to the treasury, there's a couple more things that I need to do. After I've selected my cards, and we'll talk about those more in a minute, also make sure that the landmark cards are here, but there's three gold cards out. You can return any unused character cards and goal cards and player tokens back to the box. You're almost ready to play, but let's go ahead and talk about a couple things. First, when you take a look at those eight cards that you're dealt, the four buildings and four ships, and pick five to keep, they will show a cost in the upper right hand corner with a dollar sign. You have to pay that cost, and then you get to keep those cards. It's okay if you don't know exactly what each one will do, but there is a handy iconography at the back of the rule book. Suffice it to say, though, that you need boats for space to build buildings, but you also want to pay attention to what resources you are generating each turn, as these will determine what you can build. On the left side of the ship cards, they will show you what resources they can build. In the case of the Minerva and the Onyx, they each are going to generate a wood and a rock after I have paid for the ships to dock. There's also a scrap bonus down here, and it shows the size of these boats. Choose a first player by any method you like. Maybe it's the last person who was on a boat, and give them the first player marker. Next, each player, in turn order, will place a size 3 ship tile on a water space into the harbor. One shore edge should be next to the, to the shoreline, and the rest of the boat along the wharf. Like this, and this. Each space of that boat should get a structure on it before you play. Now it looks like you're all ready to play. Let's go ahead and talk about the gameplay. The game is played over three rounds and at the end of each round you will score these round goals. In addition to being played over three rounds, each round is broken up into an action phase and a buy phase which will happen five times for each player as shown on the player board here. In the action phase the player must do one of the following. Play a ship, construct a building, or scrap a card. Let's talk about each one of those actions. First of all, to play a ship, you must be able to do every step in order to dock it. Let's say that I wanted to dock the Minerva. I would find a ship with the same size, four here. 
I would play the ship card from my hand next to the ship icon on my player board. I would take this ship tile that matches the size and shape and place the ship next to at least one of the following. An infill tile, a ship that I own, or a wharf. That infill tile should be one that I've already placed a structure on and shows my type of structure. If it touches a wharf like this, I would have to pay one, two, three, four in order to dock it there. Or I could dock this one like this, and I'd only have to pay two. Or I could dock it like this and pay none. As long as I'm touching at least one thing that I should be, I can legally dock this ship. I would probably play something like this, though, because I'd only have to pay two plus the last thing you do is you place a structure on that. And because I've placed a structure next to my opponent's structure, I would get to go up on the council track. Every time you place a single structure next to orthogonally and at the same level, an opponent structure, you get that council benefit. The resources on the ship are now available to you. So for the Minerva, now I have a wood and a stone. That's the first action I could take. The second action, remember, is constructing a building. Buildings are going to come later after ships, but you have to have the costs available. Let's say I wanted to construct this apartment next turn. I place it next to the building location on my board, checking that I have enough resources either through ship cards, building cards, character cards, and any tokens I may have earned. Money is always paid from the coins that I have in inventory. The cost is shown here on the right. Then I take the building size that I have, and I have to be able to legally place it. This one is only two, so it's easy, and place it on my structures. Then I may, I don't have to, but I may put a structure on top of that building tile. Gain the building bonus shown on that card, in this case, one point, and then I may also get an additional building bonus here on the bottom right, below that. If it has a double arrow, these are in-game scoring. Otherwise, it is an immediate bonus based on the game state. So if this is a level two structure, I'm gonna get four points. Finally, if I don't want to play a ship card, play a building card, I can just scrap a card. When you scrap a building or ship, you will gain an immediate benefit. This is in the lower left-hand corner, not in the white area on the far left, but right next to that. There'll usually be like a hand doing something or another symbol that is quite clear in the back of the rule book, iconography. When you scrap this, you gain this benefit like money or placing a structure or tile, and you discard the card to the appropriate discard pile. Perform any actions shown, or you can also choose to gain three money or place two structures. You may choose to discard all the cards from one of the two market rows, either the building row or the ship row, in order to refill that with four new cards. Now that you've taken one of those three actions during the action phase, let's talk about the buy phase. In the buy phase, you must buy a card and then store a card on your player board. In order to buy a card, you're going to pay that cost in the upper right hand corner. This one costs one, this one costs zero. I can choose the zero. After I've bought a card, I add it to my hand. Then I immediately refill that row. If I don't have enough money to buy any of these cards, then I choose either the building cards or the ship cards, flip over the top card from the pile that I chose, and I can lose a point relative to the cost. In either case, after I have gotten a card, I will choose a hand, card from my hand, it could be the one that I just got, and add it to my player board to get ready for next round. That's also keeping track of those five turns that each of us will have during the round. Let's talk about some additional things you should know. Structures. Structures grant you a bonus for each one placed adjacent to another player structure. As long as it is on the same level and orthogonally adjacent, that's great. For each structure that is placed like that, advance one space on the council track. Whenever you pass or stop a bonus on the console track, you get that bonus, even if it was passed because you took several steps on your console track, you will get that bonus. 
with the structures, you should know these things, that you can only put them on your own buildings and or ships. When you dock a ship, you must place one structure. When you build a building, you have the choice to optionally place a structure. If you pay the signature cost, which is the cost in the bottom right hand corner showing a circled gold amount. If you can't see the gold, then it's just the circled amount of resources. If you pay that, you get to build the full size of that structure. In this case, the church, I would put four out as long as I can legally place that. With an infill, I place one structure on that tile. I don't have a choice about that. I also have to pay a docking cost when that building goes next to the wharf. If I take a scrap action in order to build structures, I may place up to that many, but I can place less if I want to. With the council bonus, I may place up to that many also, but I can also take less. There's also a max height of four levels. With wharf tiles, we increase the value of that wharf for scoring. In this case, instead of being seven, I can make this one into an eight, and so forth. Gain one dollar each time you place one on an end, extending it out in this fairly faint outline, but it goes straight out here. After I've done that, when wharfs are scored, it is how long it is, including these tiles. These can be a sneaky way to gain some additional points. Because remember those docking fees? Maybe I placed the ship legally earlier so that it extended beyond where the wharf was, but then I got money for extending the wharf tile and I increased my influence. Maybe it'll look something like this if this was uh, illegal, a legal placement. I now have additional influence at this wharf that I didn't have before because I placed a wharf tile here and here, assuming that there was a legal place for me to get this ship out here. Wharf influence is calculated not orthogonally, but all buildings next to the wharf, including ones that might be higher than the first level. Any height next to the wharf is considered for wharf influence. We'll talk about that a little bit more in a second. But there's also infill tiles. Like I said, that's the opposite side of the wharf. This is when you would take mud and dirt and stone and fill in the harbor that was fairly shallow at the time and create new ground. You must place one structure on it. These are used to block, create space, and increase your standing with city council. You're going to look for a water space that's next to a ship you own or an infill tile you own to place one of these. Remember, if it's ever next to a dock, pay the $1 docking fee. Finally, we have landmark cards. Landmark cards are special buildings. You can reveal one of these, two in the solo game, and place it next to the market when you pass these points on the council track. Anybody can build one of these. And you can build these in addition to any other building that you built. You just can't use the same resource twice on the same building. For example, this one needs a sunk ship and three stones. As long as I have three separate stones on my cards out here, then I can build this, even if I use those stones for a previous building this round. Finally, resource tokens. These are advanced resources that you gain and spend wisely. When they're spent and they're not always available, they get used up. Once they're used, you return them to the supply. There's bricks, paper, and steel. Finally, let's talk about ending a round. Each player takes those five turns that we talked about. This is shown here on the player board where there's space for five cards to go from the buy round. Then you'll score the rounds like this. In round one, score Wharves Influence and the first goal. In round two, you do Council Scoring and goal two. And finally, in round three, you do Wharves Council and goal three. This is shown on the board here, here, and here. Let's talk about each type of scoring. In Wharf Scoring, you score points equal to the number of spaces on that wharf. Like I said before, if you extended these wharves, then it gets additional points. This wharf is worth eight now. This one is still worth seven. First place gets that many points. Second place gets half of that rounded down. And third place gets half of the second place rounded down again. In the case of any ties, add the current rank and the next rank down, and then divide by two. Council scoring is similar. 
Score your position on the council track. According to how many players behind you, score three for each player behind you. It's very simple. Ties are resolved in the same way. After the round has finished with each player taking five turns, then you're going to prepare for the next round. Each player gains $1 for each money resource symbol in their display, like this one. Discard all the cards from both market rows and refill them. Every player picks up the five cards from the, their board to start a new hand for the new round, and then pass the start player token to the player in last place. If you're tied for last place, the player who played last gets the start player token. After you've refilled the rows and everybody has their cards, you're ready to start the new round. Play will, will proceed in the same manner. At the end of the game, you're going to score buildings. Score points for any building, including landmarks, that have building bonuses with that in-game scoring icon. That's that double arrow pointing towards the right. It looks like this on the council track. On that note, on the council track, you score points equal to the highest point you have reached. For example, if you've reached here, you would get nine points. If you've reached just below that, you would only get six points. Next, check for stored cards, because you're still going to store cards. And there are some cards that give you a benefit when they're scrapped of getting the next card you get for free. That might be a good way to store some cards on here that you might not otherwise build. So you score the cards based on their market cost. If it costs three to purchase from the market, then you're going to get three points for it. Also, if you're on the advanced side of your character card, you're going to score any points related to the in-game scoring condition of your character. Again, this is on only the advanced side. You should either be all playing on the basic side or the advanced side together. If there's a tie at this point, you look at most structures placed, then farthest on the council track, then most leftover money. If you're still tied, well, you need to play again. There's a lot to like about this game. The components are nice and tactile. I like the artwork and the little unnecessary embellishments, which are just a lot of fun, like the whale and the pelican and the artwork. It just is an enjoyable game to play. And for some people, the little tiles might be a problem, but I really like how they did it. I like the production quality. There's good production quality there. I like that they didn't choose to go bigger, even though they could have, to maybe deal with some of the building issues. But I think it would have been a different game with a different table presence. I like the table presence as it is, as the buildings get built out, and it changes in that way. It's a very fun game to play and figure out the puzzle. It's also a fun game in terms of building those buildings up and having that table presence that way. The setting is interesting, and it's a different take on the capitalism taking place in history. I was inspired to read more about San Francisco and the Embarcadero District. It actually had times where people were sinking these ships. There was a time when over 700 ships came during that huge population growth of San Francisco. And with all these ships left behind, they were filling up the shallow water next to what is now the breakwater wall of the Embarcadero District that's going through a $2 billion uh, renovation right now. Um, all that to say, these people were doing crazy things like building warehouses and saloons and even a jail and a church out on what had been part of the bay before, the part of the harbor. Um, it's one of the most unique historical districts in the U.S., and it's been set aside as a special place in the U.S. and in U.S. history because of that. I'm excited to visit and learn more about it because of that. Um, games should inspire our imagination, and this one does that for me. I went and did more reading. I'm looking forward to traveling there. I like what's going on in the gameplay. Um, I like the choices that are being made. So who might not this game be for? Well, it is light enough that kids could play it, but I don't think it's going to capture their attention in the same way. So it's likely not a family game for younger kids. Um, there is a bit of strategy in the game, even though it's a very easy game to learn in terms of its mechanics. The solo game is also enjoyable, but I think it really shines at the multiplayer uh, count. Probably best at three, maybe four. I think it does get a little bit cluttered on the board. Uh, I've played both solo and multiplayer, if I haven't already said that. And I think it has some really cool things with the physical implementation, but like I said before, the small tiles might make some people uh, wary of it because after a while with so many things going on it can be easy to feel like you're knocking over the buildings and so forth um, but
But overall, it's a well thought out game. Like the components are thought out, the goals are fun, the change, the landmarks could seem overpowering, but I think they're mitigated and the randomness is mitigated by the different resources that you can get through ships or buildings and the different choices that you have to make there all the time. There's always something good to do in the game. And if there's always something good to do, that means that there's different paths to victory. I like the characters that they included, that they made a choice intentionally to do that. I think this is a great game for a small group of friends who get together and play different games regularly, and they want something that they can talk over, but they want a little bit of strategy in it. Or maybe you like introducing new games to people, because this is a really easy game to teach and pick up. And so you can teach this game and have a conversation. It's great for that. Um, and if you want to talk about history and San Francisco or maybe places you've traveled, it's good for that too. That's why I mentioned the fact that like it encouraged me to go and read more too. I think the games that encourage that are a good thing. Maybe you don't, but I recommend the game for its setting, theme, and mechanics, and ease in teaching. If you think that sounds interesting, great. Try it out. It does also go up to five players with the Unseekable expansion, but you don't have to have the expansion. And I do think it plays better at three or four. Um, but if you don't think that this sounds interesting, let me know in the comments and what you would rather see in a game like this. And please consider clicking, sharing, and subscribing so that we can share more content like this. Happy gaming, and we'll catch you later.